Can you feel a bit of revolution in the air? And some would say we are on the precipice. Some would say we already are living the fourth industrial revolution. Whatever rocks your boat, I'm here to tell you there's a whole lot of change coming. Two words, humanoid robots. Versatile, intelligent, dexterous, and pretty much any other adjective from the cosmos section what women want in a man, but in machines. And I don't mean Bert Kreischer, the machine. I mean human looking droids that can help but also replace humans. From heavy unskilled labor to dangerous experiments and high tech labs to just your ordinary house cleaning. But hold it. People have been talking about droids for ages. What's so different now? The stage has been set with huge leaps in generative AI algorithms and the show is about to begin with thinking, understanding and physically able robots. I'm Nick and this is Act 1 Scene 1 for Top 10 Humanoid Robots. The holy grail for engineers developing droids is to replicate human ability. In other words, robots shouldn't just have hands like a human, they should be able to use them like one. Today, many developers are fixated on creating actuators with hair trigger tolerances that will allow robots to move with high precision. But is that really the secret to how apt humans are with their hands? Unequivocally, no. Perhaps vision is our superpower. Robots too are already perfectly able to position themselves in space and recognize objects. Although it makes their tasks easier, this doesn't help them either. So the secret of human dexterity is not vision, otherwise humans could do nothing in the dark or blindfolded. Our chutzpah comes from a rich network of sensors that transmit information to the brain where from it can make decisions and most importantly learn. Children start out stumbling awkwardly, but gradually their abilities evolve and they begin to interact with objects without looking. Animals can do this as well. The basis of this sensor network is a trifecta of vision, touch and proprioception, the sense of one's body. Robots have vision and many of them, such as Atlas and Teslabot, can understand the position of their bodies in space. However, touch is often limited to force and sometimes pressure sensors. Whereas humans receive much more information through touch. For example, we feel vibration, deformation and compression, understand the magnitude and direction of force, gliding, friction and texture. All of these parameters are processed by our brain and influence how we hold and manipulate an object. What's more, with each interaction, we learn. Bottom line, to create an agile universal humanoid, you need a hardware platform that can perform human tasks, tactile sensors that measure all the important parameters, and software that allows the robot to learn from its mistakes and pass on its experience to other robots. For better or worse, all of this is already in place. And to a greater or lesser extent, it is embodied in 10 of the world's newest and most advanced humanoid robots. Let's start with the least humanoid looking but commercially available robot Digit from Agility Robotics. It was designed to work in a warehouse and is already being tested by Amazon. Digit's unique feature that sets it apart from the rest of the field is its backward bending knees. These robot legs are a highly efficient kinematic model that responds to unexpected impacts while being energy efficient at the same time. This makes Agility Robotics offspring very fast and at the same time very stable. Digit's arms don't look like ours either. The developers only gave the robot a simple grip for handling boxes, stating that it doesn't need more. And this is despite the fact that Digit is one of the most funded humanoid robot projects in the world and it's going to be produced in a factory with a capacity of 10,000 units per year. The factory, by the way, is already under construction.
However, Digit is not the only commercial humanoid to be mass-produced. Singapore-based startup Fourier Intelligence has been producing exoskeletons for medical purposes since 2017. However, riding the wave of popularity of droids, the engineers decided not to nickel and dime. After all, an exoskeleton that can support a person's weight and facilitate walking is almost a ready-made robot. So, there was a first-generation humanoid called GR1. The robot is 6 feet tall, 180 centimeters, and weighs 120 pounds, or 65 kilos, with 40 degrees of freedom. Thanks to peak torque of 300 newton meter generated by an articulated module mounted on its hip, the robot can walk at a speed of 3 miles per hour, or 5 kilometers per hour, and can collect and carry objects weighing a tad under its own weight. The robot was primarily designed for medical rehabilitation, but GR1 also has elements of artificial intelligence. For example, to ensure natural interaction with people, it's equipped with ChatGPT, and in the future, the company hopes to train its robot in elderly care and household maintenance. Moving on, 1X, formerly Haloti Robotics, recently received $23.5 million to put its nimble humanoid robot on real legs. Moreover, the main investor was the company OpenAI, whose experts considered the robot one of the most advanced in the world. The earlier generation of 1X robots was called EVE and was already able to move autonomously and navigate terrain, as well as manipulate objects, open doors, and perform other functions. However, it traveled on a wheeled base. Now, the robot will stand firm and tall on its own feet, and it will be named Neo. I wonder if it's going to know that there is no spoon. We'll have an update about Yuri Geller-esque antics from 1X in the coming months. Recently, the world saw yet another humanoid robot, another telling name, Apollo, from Aptronic. The company developed and delivered several generations of humanoid exoskeletons for the US DOD. Aptronic built on those to create the Astra robot, for which it developed hand-eye coordination to lift and manipulate objects. Then Astra served as the foundation for the new Apollo robot. The bot is 5'8", which is 173 centimeters tall, and weighs 160 pounds, which is 73 kilos, and can run up to four hours on a single replaceable battery, carrying loads of up to a quarter of its own weight, which is 25% more than the Tesla bot and the figure robot. Apollo is designed to work in warehouses, so its first production version won't have human hands. However, the company then hopes to refine the robot and make it a universal humanoid. We know nothing about the robot's training, but in today's bull market, developers often skip this info, among other things, in the hope that soon there will be a breakthrough in robot training and they'll be able to quickly roll out an update and call their next robot Orpheus. Xiaomi's Cyber One humanoid robot remains a mystery project. What's intriguing is whether one of the largest smartphone manufacturers in Asia will bring its project to a logical end, or was it a way to just garner publicity? After Musk's presentation of the Optimus robot, many companies realized how to become internet stars overnight. The robot is 5'9", 177 centimeters tall, and weighs 114 pounds, which is 52 kilos. It has 21 degrees of freedom and a curved OLED module to display real-time interactive information. Speaking about their motivation to create the robot, Xiaomi representatives said, quote, We are working on replacing human labor with humanoid robots, although there is a long way to go before that happens happens. The second reason is that we believe that humanoid robots are the most technically sophisticated of all forms of robots. By working on them, we can also use this technology to solve the problems of other machines such as four-legged robots, robotic arms, and even wheeled robots. I'm getting Lex Luthor vibes when I hear people talk like that. What do you guys think? Are we on the same page here or should I just take a chill pill?
Unitree, on the other hand, took the opposite route. After taking some of their tech for a spin using robot dogs, they've taken a swing at a droid. The H1 robot is 6 feet tall, which is 182 centimeters, and weighs 100 pounds, 47 kilos. The machine is equipped with a high-torque articulated motor and gearing developed by Unitree. A depth camera and a 3D LiDAR sensor help the robot perceive its environment. No official release date for the robot as of yet, however, some reports suggest that it should be available in the next 3 to 10 years and will cost less than $90,000. Wow, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall when they held that meeting for their shareholders. Moving on, another Chinese giant, Xpeng, unveiled the PX5 humanoid bot. With its ability to maintain its balance, the robot can easily navigate different terrains such as lawns and gravel. What's more, PX5 is good at dynamics. It can play soccer and even ride a Segway. The PX5 also has a human gait, without that squatting thing that most robots do. Its arms are pretty functional as well. They can pour you a glass of water or hand you an Xbox controller, all the while lifting up to 6 pounds, 3 kilos each. Xpeng says the robot is going to hit the shelves only next year, probably because they're still busy putting the PX5 through P90X. Phoenix is the next droid on our radar. Sanctuary AI is soon to release its sixth generation bot, this time with actual legs. Earlier versions of the robot were test drives for operational techniques and tweaks to Carbon AI software. The idea is that the developers first show the robot how to perform this or that task, then it learns how to do it on its own and tries to generalize and transfer its experience to similar actions. There's still a lot of work to be done, but this seems like exactly the kind of path that could make the robot truly versatile. And given the importance that Sanctuary AI has placed on the tactile sensations and capabilities of the robot, perhaps Phoenix will be the embodiment of robots to come. But can it rise from the ashes? I really don't know how much more ambitious one can get about developing a universal humanoid robot. And then there's Figure AI. Brett Adcock, am I pronouncing that correctly, is the founder of Figure AI and has 70 million US dollars of investments up his sleeve. He previously successfully launched human resources platform Vettery, as well as a vertical takeoff and landing electric aircraft startup, Archer Aviation. Of the recent things Adcock said about Figure AI is that it would develop and release a universal humanoid robot in a year, which came right after a similar announcement by Elon Musk. Although Musk said it would take him anywhere between 1 to 10 years to release the robot, Adcock is confident he can do it faster. Knock on wood. But I get why it's the stellar team of engineers that Figure AI managed to cherry pick from companies like Boston Dynamics, Toyota Research Institute, Agility Robotics, Google, and Apple. The startup recently showed off a real life prototype of Figure 01. The robot, with the height and weight of an average human, walks like us using inertia and whole body positioning. Its speed is about 3 feet per second, which is a meter per second, and that's pretty fast. The developers are keeping their cards close to their chest as to how the robots trained. Judging from the evasive answers though, we can conclude that both teleoperation and simulation training are used. The robot has humanoid arms, with the help of which it should soon learn to rearrange boxes and pick up individual items. From the technical specs, we know that the robot has a total of 41 degrees of freedom, cameras with a 360 degree view, and at the same time, the robot sees in the same way as Tesla. That is, it creates a small, three-dimensional simulation of the world and labels objects to know what they are. Since we've mentioned Musk, let's talk about the culprit behind the new boom of humanoid machines, Optimus. Musk's company recently shared the robot's progress. 
thanks to the same advanced computer vision that the company uses in its full self-driving system, TeslaBot can now pinpoint the location of its arms and legs just by looking at them. And we've already mentioned that this is extremely important for a robot to do. Tesla also claims that this self-calibration system helps the robot learn new tasks more efficiently. The latest video of the robot demonstrating its operational skills showed the robot's smooth, precise and very confident movements. Optimus also demonstrates a leisurely walk and impressive balance. The developers reported that the robot's neural network has undergone end-to-end -end training. The input is video, the output is parameter settings and in general progress is in sight. And out of all the mentioned goals, the most unattainable one for TeslaBot today is probably the price of $20,000. What do you guys think about Optimus? Leave a comment below. Finally, on to Atlas Robot from Boston Dynamics, probably the most famous robot in the world thanks to its incredible dexterity. They created a veritable, vast library of movements available to the robot. By sensing its body in real time and seeing the immediate space in front of it, the robot instantly selects a combination of movements from the library that help it achieve its goals, such as jumping on boxes or doing a somersault. Atlas is developing rapidly, with developers test driving more and more tech on it. Boston Dynamics admits that today it's a lot easier to teach the robot new skills, but do not reveal the methods of its tutoring. However, given the recent foundation of Boston Dynamics Institute of Artificial Intelligence, we do not exclude the possibility that one day Atlas will acquire not only incredible physical capabilities, but also the intelligence that will make it a truly useful and versatile robot. Can't wait for BattleBots 24. We have just scraped the surface off the tip of the iceberg. To delve deep into all things robotics and AI, subscribe to the channel, check out our telegram, and if you want to get something off your chest, shoot us a message. Until next time, bye bye.